So today we're moving the archer fish to their new aquarium. A few things might look a little different from the initial setup. We did add a few more little plants. I moved some of the logs around just to bring them a little bit further, just to create more depth and make it look a little darker. The tank is slightly cloudy because if you've seen when we set up the Oscar Aquarium, we transferred a ton of biological media as well as pre-filters and sponges to the aquarium to cycle it. Now, what if I told you the bacteria responsible for the nitrogen cycle in a freshwater aquarium is an entirely different species than that of a saltwater aquarium. And there's no specific species of bacteria for a brackish water aquarium. You see, to make a brackish water aquarium, and I'm gonna put this into perspective, a freshwater aquarium has a salinity or a specific gravity of one. Everything above that, like one, even 1.001, has salt in it. A brackish water aquarium starts at around 1.002 and it goes all the way up to 1.022. After that, we get into a full saltwater aquarium like we have for Kevin. Mind you, the clouded archer fish can survive entirely for their entire lifespan within a freshwater system. However, as they grow, they can also adapt to higher salinity levels and move into a brackish tank. Now I have a bunch of brackish water fish coming that I am beyond excited about. I'm talking about before the internet and I used to go to the library and rent books and, and I'd flip through the pages and I get to brackish and I would see these types of fish in there and always wanted them. I've literally never seen them in person. But in three weeks they're going to be here. So I have three weeks to adjust the archer fish, the archer fish to a brackish water aquarium. I took two liters of Fritz salt. Hands down the best salt I've used. It, it dissolves well in the water. Um, and depending if you go with the reef salt versus marine salt, uh, you can get a ton of different benefits. Bottom line is this. I added two liters of that. Two liters of, of, of granulized, look, it's right here. Oh, this is enough to make 200 gallons of real salt water. You have no idea if you're a freshwater aquarist, just the sheer volume of salt it takes to make a saltwater aquarium, but it's a lot. I took two liters of that, filled right to the top, and added it into the filter before uh, I added any of the media. I let it dissolve, I let it circulate for the aquarium for a couple of days, and now I'll show you what the salinity is. After two liters, <laughs> you know how like freshwater aquariums will take some aquarium salt, rock salt, and add it in, and we're thinking we're adding so much? No, <laughs> we're not. But we've added, and here's a salinity tester. Put it in the water, let it test. We're gonna come back to 1.004. So at this point, it's officially brackish, but not as brackish as I want it to be. It's not brackish enough for me. I, uh, I'm probably going to raise the salinity in this aquarium to 1.012, which is uh, halfway between fresh and salt, incredibly brackish. If you're not familiar with a brackish aquarium, imagine when the ocean meets a river. When they mix at that conjunction, the water's mixing and you get like half fresh, half salt, and there's a specific types of fish that will survive there. And over the next three weeks, I'm slowly going to raise the salinity every few days. I'll probably just add a two liter of salt to the aquarium or half a, or one liter, something like that, every couple of days until we get the salinity up to where we want. I have three weeks, we could take it slow. So that, my friends, is problem number one. The first thing we need to tackle is the salinity issue. We need to slowly get them adapted to it. Obviously, the second problem is the bacteria. Not the same bacteria in a fresh as there is salt, but there's no specific bacteria for brackish. You see, the, at this point, at this salinity, freshwater bacteria will adapt to its conditions. The higher in salinity we get, that bacteria is gonna die off and we're going to move into requiring marine bacteria, a totally different species. So we'll go from nitrobacter and Nitrobacter and, oh, nitrosinomus. <laughs> Nitrobacter and nitrosinomus within a freshwater system and then saltwater 
I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But I do know that by adding in freshwater bacteria in these sponges, we'll keep this tank going. And as I slowly uh, raise the salinity, the marine bacteria, which is what all these blocks are, will kick in. Now, it's going to take a while for that marine bacteria to die off in a freshwater system. It's not going to happen overnight. So I have time to save all the bacteria and hopefully this plan of doing 50-50 of the bacteria will work out long term. Now, because this is a 180 gallon tank and we're adding in relatively small fish, this should work. These, my friends, are the things that get me excited about the aquarium hobby. Things that you haven't experienced yet or things that are a challenge or exciting or different or and then the fish that are coming, I'll, they'll have to be quarantined, but we'll be able to put them in a full brackish tank and quarantine them in that. And then when they're ready, this will be a full brackish tank. In today's video, we're simply adding in the archer fish and seeing how they interact with their environment. But I definitely had to touch base on that because uh, to me, it's just so fascinating. Now, it would be much easier if I left, uh, if I drained this system all the way down and scooped the fish out of the bottom, but I'm not going to be able to do that because I want this tank to continuously run because I do have more fish arriving here shortly that I'm going to need to quarantine in here. And if I were to do like a 100% water change or something like that in here, uh, I'm removing all the ammonia, all the fish waste, everything in here, and then the bacteria has no chance of surviving. So I've left this tank almost completely alone with no maintenance in the anticipation that I'm going to be moving these fish and they are going to require, or at least the bacteria is going to require something to survive. Unfortunately, archers are a fast swimming fish and they can potentially be jumpers. Oh my lord, these guys are beautiful outside of the aquarium, aren't they? Just absolutely fascinating. Now one of the things that I'm a little bit worried about is some of the fish that are coming are venomous. Now the reason why I'm able to move them over so quickly from one aquarium to the other, besides the fact that we already have their uh, filters established with all their bacteria within it is because over the last couple of weeks I've been slowly raising the salinity on the 120 up to the 1.004 like the 180 is. So there's really no acclimation required. I can just net it from one tank and put them in the other. Last one. Yeah, so for the most part, these guys are swimming around, acting normal, um, which is a fantastic sign of a successful transfer from one tank to the other, and the fact that no acclimation was actually required. They're not, they're not looking like they're in shock from pH or salinity levels or temperature or anything like that. They're just swimming around. Let's wait, give them a couple of days. We'll come back and see how everybody is. 24 hours later, and the archers have settled in beautifully, much more rapidly than I had assumed uh, they would. Uh, and I, I really wanna point out one thing first and foremost. Um, it, because the background is all blacked out, because the walls are black in here, it kind of makes the aquarium look like it goes on forever. The archers, I will say, are spending a lot of their time in the back behind the uh, branches or the, the the logs and I'm not a huge fan of that but again we got to let them settle in and do really well but they're definitely doing well um, switching from their other tank to this went perfectly fine of course the salinity matched in both of them so that of course wasn't going to be much of an issue uh, the next thing that I'm truly excited about is the fish to come all the other fish that are going in this aquarium are currently on their way they should be here within a couple of weeks and uh, they'll go into quarantine and uh, eventually come over to here. And like I said, we'll slowly start raising the salinity on this tank over the next couple of weeks uh, in anticipation to add in some fully brackish uh, fish. But these archers right now, I, I think they look better in this tank than anything else. And I think this scape, although different for a brackish aquarium, it just makes so much sense for the fish. And when the others come, you're going to agree even more. I mean, the blacks, and whites and grays. Uh, the archers, of course, have a little bit of orange and red on their fins, but uh, yeah, this is just absolutely gorgeous. The tank has cleared up a bit as well, so it's looking really good. But even if we go in through the sides and whatnot, and I can't wait to make more and more of these videos on these fish and what's to come. Um, 
and I have a bunch of different ideas. But if you want to see these types of things before anybody else and kind of have be able to give feedback and that sort of thing, or you simply just you have no patience like me, consider being a member of this channel. Just uh, below this video, there's a join now button. You become uh, a channel member and uh, you know, we do live videos and uh, behind the scenes videos and pictures and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you're not a member yet, you got a ton to catch up on. So if you want to become a member, make sure you join. If not, there's tons of other links in the description. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you want pictures or updates on this tank. But this will be the tank to follow along with over the next couple of years, simply because uh, with the new fish coming in and there's a ton of growth, um, it's just going to be absolutely amazing. I'm going to be setting a target up over on this side, uh, away from the filter, and that's why there's not very many logs here. It's a clear shot up so they can kind of group up here and shoot the water over. So that's something to look forward to as well. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.